Hello there. In this video, we will demonstrate how to crash a project with first by one week and then as far as we can crash it. This question corresponds to problem 3.20 in your textbook. As you can see, we've been given a set of seven activities along with their normal time. And we're also presented with the crash time. Now the crash time just means the crash time represents the absolute minimum amount of time the activity can take. We're also presented with the normal cost. So that would be the cost associated with completing the task in the normal time period. So for example, so for example, for activity A, it takes four weeks at a cost of $2,000. The crash cost would be the cost to complete the project in the reduced amount of time. So if activity A were to be completed in three weeks, then that would cost $2,600. And we're also provided with the immediate predecessors for all the tasks. Our objectives for the question are below. The first one is to determine the project completion date. Basically, you want to draw the network diagram and determine how long it takes to complete the project. So that's what I've done here. A, B, and C have no predecessors. D is preceded by A, E is preceded by B, F is preceded by C, G is preceded by both D and E. You can see that the project takes 16 weeks with a path of A, D, G, and end. The next question is asking, well, what's the total cost required for completing the project in the normal time? Well, that's simply the sum of all of the normal costs, which add up to $12,300, and those are the amounts all identified in blue. The third requirement is to say, well, if we want to reduce the completion time by one week, which activity should be crashed, and how much will it increase the cost? So what we need to do now is take the information around the normal time and the crash time, along with the cost information provided, and basically determine a couple of things. One is to take the difference between the normal time and the crash time. So for activity A, we have a normal time of four weeks minus a crash time of three weeks equals one week. B, two minus one is one, etc. We've completed that in advance for all of these activities. Then we want to take the difference between the costs. So we take the crash cost minus the normal cost. And you see what I also did here is actually numbered my columns. So the normal time minus the crash time is column five, and that's just the difference between column one minus column two. Column six here is the crash time minus the normal time, and that's the difference between the crash cost, which is column four, minus the normal cost, which is column three. So for activity A, the crash cost is $2,600, but the normal cost is 2,000 for a difference of 600. Activity B, 2,800 crash cost minus 2,200 normal cost is a $400 difference. Activity C, for example, cannot be crashed actually because its normal time is equal to the crash time and zero cost. So you can stop the video and make sure you can confirm all these numbers. The last column is the most important. It helps us determine the crash cost per period, or in this case per week. And to do this, we just simply take the columns we just calculated. We take column six divided by column five, so for activity A, we take the $600 difference between the crash cost and normal cost and divide it by the difference between the normal time and the crash time. That's $600. Activity B, 400 divided by 1 is $400, etc. Incidentally, column 5 here also tells us the maximum amount of time each activity can be crashed. We can call that the max crash. So now what we want to do is complete that requirement. If we were to reduce the amount of time by one week, which activity would we pick? Once we've calculated the crash cost, essentially what we want to do is first look at the critical path. The critical path is ADG. So that means that if we want to reduce the time it takes to complete the project, we have to look first at the critical path. Crashing any other activity that's not on the critical path will just cost money and not reduce the project time. So once we know the critical path is ADG, we then look and see which cost is the lowest because we want to crash as economically as possible. And so we see that activity D is the lowest cost. Now, what I've also done down here is created a list of all the activities and the crash times as identified in the table above. So three, one, three, four, etc. Then I also listed here each path. So we have three paths in the project, ADG, which takes 16 weeks. We have BEG, which would take 12 weeks and CF, which would take six weeks. Remember that the longest path is a critical path, so we must first look at the critical path. So if we want to crash by one week, we would look at the critical path and identify D as the least expensive option. So we would crash activity D times one week, because that's all we're asked to do, 
times the cost of $75. And that results in a total cost of $75. But now here's what happens, and this is important. If we crash activity D by one week, that means D would now take seven weeks to complete. We can change this in our table here. So four plus seven is now 11 weeks. That makes the earliest start time for G 11 weeks plus four is 15. And now the project will end in 15 weeks. And so if we subtract one from the critical path, that's 15 weeks. So we've essentially answered the question here to part C. We would crash D and the total cost of $75. Now we want to look at what's the maximum time that the project can be crashed and by how much will that increase the costs. So now what we're going to do is see how far we can take this project down. So looking at our path list, we can see that the critical path is still ADG. So we must first look to find any savings on that path. We always want to start with the least expensive option, which happens to still be activity D. We can crash activity D by three more weeks because the lowest we can go is to four weeks. So what we'll do now is we will crash activity D times three weeks at a cost of $75 per week for a total cost of $225. So here's what this does. It now takes another three weeks off and now it gets us to four, at which point we can no longer crash activity D. So we would subtract three and that gets us to 12 weeks. And that brings the project time down to 12 weeks. If we look at our map, we would say, okay, we would take another three weeks off to result in the lowest possible completion time of four weeks. That makes this eight. So the earliest G could start is eight weeks, takes four weeks to, to complete, and eight plus four is 12. Now there's something very interesting. If you look at our path list, path ADG is 12 weeks, but path BEG is also 12 weeks. Now we have two critical paths. So if we want to reduce the project time even further, what we have to do is either find one task that's common to both paths or crash at least one activity on each path separately. So if we go back to our cost list, let's get a couple things out of the way here. We know we can no longer crash activity D. So let's put a line through that. And if we look at our paths, we have ADG and BEG. Well, we can see that G is common to both paths. So we could look at reducing activity G first. But just to make sure, we'll look at A, B, and E to determine if those are less expensive. Well, activity A costs $600 to crash. Activity B, separately on its own, would cost 400, but then we would still need to crash something else on ADG. So let's go with crashing activity G. And we wanna go as far down as we can. We can see that G can be crashed from four weeks to two, so we might as well knock it down by two weeks, times a cost of 300 per week is a total cost of $600 to crash activity G. What this does, so activity G now becomes two. We would take two weeks off ADG and two weeks off BEG to get us down to 10 weeks. If we look back at our chart, this now becomes two, eight plus two is 10, and that brings the project down to 10 weeks. And actually see here, I forgot to crash this down to 12 and then 10. And that brings us down to 10 weeks. So now G is off the list for any activity to crash. We can still go further, but we have to make sure that we then select at least one activity off each path because there is no longer any activity that's common to both paths. So we have no choice but to crash activity A times one week times $600 is 600. So this will take us down to three because that's as far as we can go. And then we must look at the BEG path we see that of B or E, E is the least expensive. So we will crash E times one week, and that will cost 100 for a total cost of $100. So E gets crashed by one. We then take one week off each, giving us nine weeks, both still critical. A can no longer be crashed, so we can cross that one out. B and E can still be crashed, but ADG is still critical and we can no longer crash any activities along that path. Uh, F can also be crashed, but uh, again, it's not on the critical path. So in essence, that's as far as we can go. So in essence, what we've done is in three separate waves, so 
this was a wave, this was a wave, and then these two were a wave. So in essence, what we've done is we've been able to max crash for a total of seven weeks, one from the first, plus three, plus two, plus one week in total. So that's seven weeks for a total cost of $1,600. We add all those together. And that in essence is the answer to activity D. The maximum time that can be crashed is seven weeks at a cost of $1,600. And the project will end up taking nine weeks because if we go back to our diagram and reduce this by one is three, that's three, three plus four is seven, seven plus two is nine. And we would cut E by one, that makes us seven and seven plus two is nine. So these do take a little bit of practice. The recommendation is that you list all the paths as I have down here and identify your starting point. And with each wave of crashing, make sure that you know exactly how many weeks or days you have left on each path to identify if you come across more than one critical path. So as you saw, after our first two waves, we ended up having two critical paths. And then we had to crash activities on both paths in order to make it work properly.